Hi everybody, welcome back to Wednesday's playgroup. Uh, we're getting on and we're going to do some more musical instruments today. Uh, so yeah, I thought we'd start off first with a simple one, which is a paper plate tambourine. Again, the key um, aim to these activities is making sure that they're things that um, you'll have around the home or if you don't have these exact things, things that you'll be able to substitute. Um, and going back to the topic we were talking about on Monday about tuning in to your children, these activities are relatively quick and easy to do and come into our first sort of main point of giving your child your full attention. One of the articles I shared on the Facebook page earlier this week spoke about, of course, as families, we can't um, spend all day, every day, interacting with our children in a one-on-one -on -one fashion, particularly when we've got other children working from home, um, family commitments but if you can set aside some time each day to do even if it's just one craft activity or one activity in general reading a story or just having a genuine one-on-one -on -one conversation where you're really tuned in and listening and focusing on your child that's going to do you know wonders the child's going to feel fantastic you're going to feel really good too so um, keeping in mind that these activities are fantastic ways to tune into your child and your family okay so paper plate tambourine a nice simple one obviously get your paper plate you're going to want something that you can use as a uh, shaking agent so I've got um, just some wheat here but again rice beans if you had little buttons or beads if you've got little bells would be fantastic make it a little bit um, extra musical but so fold it in half um, before you put the things inside decorate it as you like so you could obviously use textures and draw some wonderful pictures so I might do mine in a fruit theme today, I think. So on this side, I'm going to draw some wonderful bananas. And again, it's all about having a go rather than what it looks like. As you can see, my artistic um, abilities are fairly rustic and that's okay. It's about having the fun with it. Another great idea Texas, you know, you can use your Texas pencils, crayons. Another great idea and one that we've revisited earlier is using the catalogues. So again, I don't know about you, but I end up with heaps of catalogues each week. I'm always trying to think up ways that I can use them. So going back to our healthy eating discussions and dental health from a few weeks ago, I'm gonna cut out some apples and I'm gonna stick them onto the other side of my paper plate tambourine. Cutting is fantastic. It's one of those skills that um, can be quite tricky for your, your toddlers to master, um, but the more practice, the better, and they always enjoy it. Obviously, if you've got babies and you're making instruments for them, you can still talk about the colors and the pictures and the different things that you're doing, but you'll obviously help, have to help do them for the child. So apples on this side, bananas on this side, I've got my bag of wheat, so I'll put a couple of scoops in. You can use the whole paper plate, so I've folded mine over. You can use two, um, it'll give you a bit more sort of shaking room, but for this, I'll just use a half and that'll be fine. And when you're using the half, you only want to put a small amount of shaking material in. But yes, if you've got bells or anything else, that would also be fantastic. So you can hear. Or is it similar to another shaker that we made the other day? Now I've got tape and I'll tape the edge together. Um, if you've got bigger items such as buttons, you could absolutely staple yours together. And that might be easier. A little bit of tape there. Again, children are always happy to help you with the tape dispenser. So it's great to get them involved in creating something that's just for them. All right. And now that we've made our fantastic apple, banana and apple tambourine, actually links in really nicely with one of the Nancy Stewart songs. So I'm gonna put that on next. And again, it's another example. Would have come out on the CD last week for those of you that are receiving the home packs. Um, create something together and then have a little dance, have a bit of musical time and then you can get on with your busy days. All right, let's have a listen. Time to eat my apples. 
grateful listening skills as well. So you need to listen to the song and follow the actions. And as you saw the other day, um, I'm not the best at that either, but it's always fun to play. Up high, left, right. It's a really nice and easy one that the children can do and they can enjoy and again if you've got um, babies and you've been going through or making the other shakers from um, Tuesday from yesterday then this might be another one that you know is easy for them to hold for any babies that are particularly um, keen on mouthing things or chewing them I'm not sure that this will be the most durable option maybe go back to the plastic bottle um, option was probably a little bit safer but yeah nice quick and easy one one of the other um, instruments that I'd like to make today is a, it's, a, I suppose, three instruments in one. It's a bongo, shaker, guiro. So bongo being the drum, shakers we've been making, and a guiro is one of these. So it's, you're able to make different tones with it, and it's got a scraping element. So in making our homemade version, we will be doing that using... A tin which if you notice has the ridges as well this tin was just something that I'd use at home so I think it was um, tinned tomatoes at the time but again going through the recycling and just having a think of the other ways that I can utilize this before it either goes out um, for recycling or whatever else we do with them uh, most one of the most important things though is of course if you're gonna use tins anything like this making sure that the edges inside are smooth so some can openers um, open it with it more of a smoother edge than others. So just double checking because you can get some nasty cuts from those. Um, but yeah, so essentially you need a tin, a balloon we're going to use for our top, again our filling to make our music, and then for this one to get the scraping sound, we'll use a paddle pop stick. So the hardest part of this will be cutting the end off of your balloon to stretch it over. And then as you can see in the picture behind me, what they've actually done is used a second balloon and cut some holes in it to make a pattern. So that's relatively simple. Again, cut your end off and then just make small snips to make a, a hole pattern come through. And it doesn't really matter where you cut, just fold it over and just cut small little sections. And then as you can see, it's got the holes in there. So this one's relatively simple as well. You want to put your shaking materials in before you put the balloons on. A couple of scoops will be fine. And again, it could be anything you've got laying around, buttons, beads, rice, beans, whatever you've got going on. So you want to put the full balloon on first if you're going to pattern it. And it will need a little bit of stretching. but hopefully we can get it over. So yeah, um, because you are stretching a balloon over, you're probably going to want to go for a smaller tin rather than anything big. I had had a look at um, an old formula tin I had laying around, but um, I think you'd have difficulty stretching a balloon that far. I think I'm gonna have enough difficulty stretching a balloon over this one, to be honest, but we'll have a look. Excuse me, this probably doesn't make for riveting live footage. Okay, but it can be done. Bit of stretching. It's not perfect, as you can see. You've now got the shaker effect. 
that's sealed relatively well. But again, if you've got children that are likely to pull at that or um, try to take it off, I'd be either hot gluing it or taping it with masking tape quite effectively just so you can keep that in there. And then if you're going to be really ambitious and get this second one over, I'm not sure whether I'll be able to achieve it, but I'll have a go. And again, it's really just more about the patterning technique rather it's quite effective with just the one balloon over okay so i got it over again not quite as beautiful as the picture behind me but you can see it's given a bit of a patterning effect and if you took a little bit more time and, and planning probably look quite good now again this top part is um the aim of being a drum so the smoother you can get it the better but still makes a good sound and it's about the experience, not the outcome. So again, that's on the top there. And then our third element, we've got the shaker, got the drum, and the third element being the guiro or the similar washboard sound. If you show your child this, it's usually quite enchanting. They're really excited and interested to see all the different sounds they can make. Again, have them tap the top, even have them tap the bottom. So the two different sides make two different sounds as well as the edge. Again, because I'm showcasing some of Nancy Stewart's fabulous songs that go along with some of these instruments, we'll, um, I'll show you a song now called Peel the Potato, which again has fantastic listening ability. So you need to listen for the instructions and we, who doesn't love a bit of music in their day? So this one is Peel the Potato. You can hear it in the background. Excellent discussion on vegetables as well, and potentially could be used as a bit of a segue to um, getting together in this colder weather and cooking some soup, perhaps. So a nice quick and easy one and yeah great for um, practicing rhythm skills. All right. And the uh, final quick and easy instrument to make today is a straw pan flute. So these would have been traditionally um, made with plastic straws, I guess, but these days we're all a lot more environmentally conscious and we have um, cardboard straws. So I haven't actually had a go at making a cardboard straw pan flute, but why not try today? So what I'll do for this, because the straws are quite long, is cut them in half to start with. So three straws then becomes a length of six. And what you'll do is you'll start off with them all at the same length. And then you want to vary them like the picture behind me so that they give different tones coming out of each straw hole. But what I would recommend, if you're going to cut them in half first, so you want to tape, you want to have one end relatively straight which will be the top end and I'd recommend taping it first before doing any further cuts and just help keep helps to keep them in place so again if you're making this together with your child either have them hold and you put the tape on or you can hold and they can have a go at doing the tape whatever I suppose, you know, with something like this, let them lead the way. Really, really tune in to what they're saying, what they're interested in. If they want to have a go, it's probably really no harm in letting them have a try. If you're worried about the tape dispenser, of course, you can either take the tape off the roll or, um, or yeah, depending on their skills, assist them with dispensing the tape as well. At the end of the day, there's really no right or wrong way. If you guys are spending time together, and you know, being able to create something fantastic, well, you know, it's all the way. So that's now all taped together. And then what I will do is angle my scissors so that I can create 
um, different length straws, which will then hopefully create different pictures as it comes as you blow through the straws. Now, of course, with um, hygiene suggestions and COVID-19, this might be a great one to do if you have, make sure that every child has their own um, individual plant pan flute so that you're not putting your mouth on toys that other children have put their mouths on and vice versa. And that's easier to have a discussion with your older children as well. So now that I've cut that, as you can see, they're all sort of sloped. You absolutely don't need to make it this small. So if you had enough straws, you could actually just trim the ends and have quite long ones and they'd create a different sound again. But I'll give you a demonstration of my fantastic pan flutes. So you can see that the one at the end is, is a higher pitch than the longer one. And again, if you had more straws and you had um, varied pitches, you'd get different sounds as well. But that's a really, um, you know, that's a quick one, relatively cost effective, lots of fun. And um, yeah, also fantastic having those discussions and experimenting, make a small set, then make a longer set, compare them, those sort of things. So it's, uh, yeah, just a handy little one. Again, probably one more aimed to your preschoolers, this one. Um, bubs would be more likely to probably chew up the straws and, and make a right mess with that. But absolutely for your younger children, any of the shaker um, alternatives, options are fantastic. And as I was saying, um, these are some examples. There are absolutely lots more things that you can make from things around the home. And I guess it's just getting into the habit of thinking about things. I think I've discussed over a couple of sessions now that I just have a craft box at home where, you know, anytime I get an interesting looking box or, you know, it's a nice size or shape, something different, small cans, milk bottle lids, they all go into a tub that I have that's just called the craft box. And um, when it comes to, you know, keeping children entertained or um, they're looking for something to do, I refer them onto the craft box, either sit down and, and create something with them, something as simple as a, a collage or a pasting, or sometimes the children will actually lead it themselves, have a look, pull a few things out and create something from there, which is always lots of fun. So hopefully you found a few um, ideas useful this week. And uh, yeah, would absolutely love to see any outcome of any uh, instruments that you've made. We absolutely love getting feedback here at Horsham uh, Supported Playgroup. We love to see um, you guys interacting with the materials and, and yeah, so please feel free to link anything to the Facebook page uh, if you're comfortable doing so. Thank you very much, guys.